Before we get into the instructional part of the video, I just want to discuss the reason that I use digital cutters to cut my papers and sometimes even my fabric. It's because I want to be able to choose the type of paper or material that I'm going to be using for my templates. I have a certain kind of paper that I've tried that I really like. If you buy the paper pieces already cut for you, you're pretty much stuck to the type of paper that they have chosen to use or the cardstock. So I don't like a real thick cardstock, even lightweight cardstock, I do not prefer. I, I tend to use a heavier paper, uh, 34 pound or 32 pound or 40 pound, and that has worked for me. I like to use fusible interfacing for some of my projects. So I'm free to cut whatever I want on whatever material that I want. So that's my reason for using a uh, digital cutter. So uh, uh, there's some of them that have come way down in price, such as the Cricut Joy, that does a really good job of cutting cardstock and even quilters template plastic. So um, just kind of keep that in mind on how much English paper piecing that you will be doing. And um, of course you can still cut them out by hand, but um, if, if you can afford to look into a digital cutter, this is really gonna uh, help you to customize your patterns. I'm doing a series of videos on how to draw English paper piecing shapes that will work with a hexagon. I have done the Cricut design space, which is already uh, posted. I'm going to do the Brothers Scan and Cut. And then some of them, I haven't used all of these shapes, but this will give you an idea. And the programs are pretty similar. So some of these drawing techniques you can use in the, um, the other programs. But the main thing that really helps me is, um, let's see if I can pull it up. It's the um, hexagon calculator. And all you do is do a search for a hexagon calculator and open up this Omni calculator. And it gives you a nice little geometry lesson on the shape of a hexagon. So you can go in here and choose um, what your sides are going to be. If a pattern is calling for one inch hexagons, you can type in one inch here. You can also choose millimeters if you need that. Uh, any weird number is going to work in here and it's going to give you all of these calculations that are going to help us out. In our case, we're going to be drawing a one inch hexagon and um, this uh, width of the hexagon is a little bit larger than the height of a hexagon. And, and that's going to keep all the angles the same and it's going to keep all the sides one inch. So we have to know these numbers in order to uh, check ourselves when we're drawing the, um, the shapes. And uh, we have the short diagonal and this other uh, measurement down here that's from the middle of the hexagon to the short side. So you can study this little picture and get an idea of the, um, the shapes that, or the sizes that you need to, uh, I'm sorry, the dimensions that you need to check every time you draw a shape. So I'm gonna pull this off to the side onto another monitor that I have here so that I can refer to it as needed. And um, you can also just do a little screenshot of it and keep that little um, picture ready for you. So today I'm using the Silhouette Studio Business Edition. So if you're using the basic um, studio, uh, Silhouette Studio software that came with your cutter, uh, you may not have all of these tools. Um, for instance, this one you can export to an SVG if you want to uh, use it in different cutters. But um, I've got a few shapes here that work with my he hexagon, not my one inch hexagon. And um, let's just turn the color off on this so that you can see that all my little shapes will work with this hexagon because they have the one inch sides and they have the complementing angles that work with the hexagon. I don't know what you call that one. Um, I call this one a kite. So there's all kinds of ways that you can slice this hexagon and there's tools in Silhouette Studio that helps you to do that. And you can make whatever shapes you want inside there, but I'm just gonna use these sort of regular shapes um, to demonstrate the tools. Okay, 
so um, I want to open up a blank page. Obviously, we need to start with the hexagon itself. So let me just go to this blank page. And I'm going to go to my page settings over here on the right-hand side at the very top. I'm going to click on the page settings and open up the grid. And I'm going to say show grid. And I also want to snap to grid at this point. Sometimes I turn that off. So um, we're going to start with the uh, tool over here on the left-hand side. It's the drawing tools, and you go all the way to the end where it shows a little pentagon here. And we're going to draw a regular polygon. And to make this easy, start on a grid line. And I've got my grid line set at 0.25. It's just easier for me. And um, you can set as many divisions as you want also, but just make sure you're clicking to begin with on a grid line with your snap to grid turned on, and then it'll help you to not tilt the, po the uh, polygon. So it's going to draw a pentagon. So I'm going to left click on a grid line and hold the left mouse button down and just kind of draw it out. And it's wanting to tilt on me and I don't want it to. So I'm going to get my mouse cursor back on a grid line and I'm going to make sure those two little red dots are horizontal and that they are snapping to one of my grid lines. So it doesn't matter the size at this point. So I've let go of my left mouse button and I'm going to just kind of grab my pentagon and move it down. Well, I want a hexagon. So you can barely see that little number five there and there's a little slider bar here. I can slide that up to six and make a hexagon. My hexagon is still not the size that I want it to be. So I'm going to refer to my calculator and I can see that if I want a one inch sides, the width, the widest part of my hexagon needs to be double that. It needs to be two. So I'm going to um, make sure the lock button is on here and I'm going to change this widest setting to two and it automatically calculated the height to keep it, um, the aspect of it to a perfect uh, size. If I would have had this one unlocked, it would only change the width and not the height. But if I would have accidentally done that, I can easily fix it. Um, let me just stretch this out of shape just so I can show you. So the height is way off, so I'm going to unlock that button. I'm going to refer to my calculator, and the short diagonal needs to be 1.732. So now I can go in here and just type in 1.732. And um, Silhouette lets you have the three decimal places. I think the, the uh, Brother Scan and Cut only lets you have two decimal places. It will round it if you type in anything larger. So now my hexagon is perfect because it's two inches wide by 1.732 inches tall. So let's give it a color and I can just start drawing my uh, next shapes. We're going to use the same tool to draw the equilateral triangle that works with this one inch hexagon. So I'm going to slide on over here to this little pentagon shape. I'm going to make sure my snap to grid is on I'm going to left click on a grid line and drag downwards just to draw any size shape, making sure while I still have my left mouse button held down that those two little dots are lined up on a grid. I'm going to let go of the left mouse button. I'm going to drag this to where I can see it and I need a three-sided polygon because we're drawing that triangle. So I'm going to slide this down to three and put a color on it so we can see it better. And my triangle needs to be the width of one of these sides, which is one inch, so that it will match with my hexagon. I also want to turn this little lock button on so that it constrains the triangle to a perfect size. I'm gonna change the width to one inch. And you can see that the height is 0.866 and let me show you that on the hexagon. Let me turn off the snap to grid and it's going to go from the middle of the hexagon to one of these flat sides. So if you look at our little diagram here, that's this measurement here that's represented by the letter R 
and it's 0.866. So checking my triangle, I'm looking that my size is perfect. So I'm good with that one. And this one can also be sewn to the outside of the hexagon because the sides are equal. So we'll get to our next shape. Okay, this time let's draw a little diamond shape. So go over to your left hand toolbar here and this uh, little shape menu, uh, they call them flexi shapes. Um, let's choose a, a diamond shape. And again, I'm going to snap to the grid. I am going to start drawing with my left mouse button clicked onto a grid line and I'm going to drag downwards so that my um, diamond doesn't tilt. And then I'm going to let go of my left mouse button and then I want to play with the measurements of this diamond. So as you can see, it's not working with the hexagon. So we can tell by looking at it that it needs to be half of this distance of the hexagon across this way. So I'm going to, um, right away, I'm going to change the width to one inch, but I want to unlock this button because it's going to, the height is not going to be correct. So I'm going to change that to one inch. And you, know, you see it's really odd shape now. And the height I know needs to be from this flat side to this flat side, which we know is 1.732 because our calculator tells us it is. So let me give this a color and we'll drag it into our hexagon and we see that it's perfect. So let me double check my measurements here, one inch by 1.732 and my diamond is finished. The next shape that I wanna draw is this one right here and I call it a half diamond. Um, I don't think there is a flexi shape that matches you could probably use a triangle shape, but I'm going to show you what I found to be easy for me. There's two ways that you can do this, but I'm going to show you the one that, uh, or there's two ways that I've tried. Um, so I'm going to take this diamond, uh, highlight it, and I'm going to press Control D to make a copy of it. Let's make it a different color. And um, I'm going to use the knife tool but I want to make sure my snap to grid is turned on and I want to make sure that uh, rather than trying to, well, I can actually line it up on one of these blue lines here. I'm, I'm trying to line up the middle of it on one of these blue lines and it seems to be snapping correctly, but you can also use your XY coordination here and I can change that to an even number just so I can make sure it's perfectly lined up on the grid. And then I can uh, come over to the left hand toolbar and choose this knife tool. I want to make sure this solid is turned on so that it'll tell you what it is. If you, if you choose the outline tool, let's see if it'll give me the little pop up. Um, when using the knife tool to cut an unfilled closed shape, treat that shape as solid, um, so on and so forth. So I'm choosing the solid and I'm going to come up here on this um, grid line and I'm going to left mouse click and drag down right through the middle of that. And see, you don't want to go off to the side, you want to stay straight down the middle. And I'm going to let go of my left mouse button and now I have two pieces here. And um, I don't need both of them, so I'm just going to delete one of them. And then I'm going to check the measurements on this one. So I can see that my height is not correct, but the width is correct. So since this was one inch wide, I need this to be one half inch wide. So that is correct. So with the little lock button turned off, I'm going to change this just, just so I can be obsessive about it, 1.732 and there's no visible change, but it's gonna make me happy that it matches what my calculator says. The other way that you can uh, draw a polygon is there is a um, polygon tool here where this little line is, choose a polygon, and you can actually click, this kind of makes my hands hurt to do this, and click, let me back up on this, escape on that. Let me turn off the snap to grid and enable smart snapping. I'm gonna turn the grid off, 
choose this. And this is a tool that's really great if you want to make really weird shapes inside of your hexagon. And you can just trace it out. To me, this is just, I don't like doing that. But just to show you that you can. And then you can check your measurements as before. And it's slightly off because I didn't click in the right place. So you can see it's more accurate using the knife. And so I've gotten uh, I've gotten a pretty good I've gotten a pretty good shape here that will work with my hexagon. But I don't like using that tool. So you try it out and see which one you like the best. So now I've got four shapes made. All right. Um, let's see. What do I want to draw next? Let's do this one right here. Um, we'll go over to the um, flexi shape menu. I want to choose that one. I want to make sure the snap to grid is on and I'm going to show the grid. I'm going to left mouse click and hold the left mouse button down the drag right on the grid line and you're going to go down and out and it doesn't matter the shape at this point as long as it's not tilted. Let go of my left mouse button and I'm going to give this a color and I want to change the width because we can easily see that the width of this needs to be this way on the, the uh, hexagon. So I know that number is two. So I'm going to leave the little lock button turned off. I'm going to change that to two. And I know that the height of this thing needs to be this measurement that's half of the hexagon and my calculator tells me that that should be 0.866. So now I've got a hexagon, or half of a hexagon here. I don't know what the real name of that is. We can look at the, um, the layers and I think they call that a trapezium. All right, so that is the uh, half hexagon. There is a flexi shape that sort of looks like this one, but I find that I have to do a lot of dragging of the, the um, let's just draw it out. I'm going to click on a grid line here. I find that even if I change the dimensions of this thing using my width and height, I still have to drag, do a lot of dragging with the angles and all to get it perfect, and I don't want to fool with that. So let's just delete this, and I'm going to make a duplicate copy of my hexagon. I'm going to press Control D, and then I'm going to slice it the same way I did the diamond. So I want to make sure that I am lined up with the grid on one of these sides here. Let's snap to the grid. That's what's going wrong with me, for me. So let's just make sure that it lands right in the middle of one of these blue lines. Right in the middle. I want to make sure that I'm snapped to that grid. I'm going to grab my knife over here on the left hand side and I'm going to do just the same thing I did with the diamond. Making sure my line is straight and then let go of my left mouse button. So I'm going to get rid of one of these and change the color. And I want to check my dimensions. So I can see that it's 1.732 tall and it's one inch wide. So that's what I want. I wanted it to be exactly half of my, uh, my hexagon. And you can also make a, more of a house shape by um, making this another half inch wider so that it fills up more of the hexagon. But this is what I'm staying with today. All right. All right, the hardest shape for me is this one right here because I, I'm not comfortable using the flexi shapes to do it, but we'll start with that and you'll see that I will struggle with it and maybe I'll do good this time. So I, first I want to turn on the grid and click snap to grid and uh, show the grid. 
and I want to choose that kite shape and I want to start by snapping it to the grid and just dragging down so that it's not tilted and let go of the left mouse button. I'm going to get it close to the shape that I want it to be leaving the, un the unlock button off or the lock button off and I want to make it um, the width of it needs to be from here to here so that's going to be that short diagonal measurement so that's going to be 1.732 and the height of it needs to be from here to here because it's going to be tilted on this hexagon I know it's hard to visualize it here but trust me the height needs to be two all right but the angles these two sides are not going to be correct and you'll see let me see I think I need to tilt that 30 degrees so I'm going to choose this transform menu and click on the rotate button and rotate it 30 degrees yes that's correct and um, if I slide it into the corner up there you can see that the sides are not correct um, I can go over to the grid here and turn off the snap to grid I'm not going to show the grid because I find it easier without the grid on I'm going to leave that checked uh, uh, smart snapping and I want to try to line up their points right here and this is where I struggle is I can't really tell if I've got it correct so I'm going to choose this little zoom tool here and just get right in there and select my kite again on my hexagon I need to move this one back and I mean it looks like it's in the corner but here here's where I struggle I don't I'm not 100% sure so the beauty of the flexi shape is you can drag these anywhere you want them and uh, these two corners will follow each other so I can grab one of those corners and hope that it snaps to the corner of the hexagon and I can tell it's off a little bit but this is the part I don't like tweaking it by dragging it but if, if you're okay with this one then you, you may be better at it than I am so I am think I'm on point with that so I'm gonna select the um, height that I just drew and look at my measurements and they are off it needs to be 1.732 so I can tweak it here and hope that um, it's still matching my hexagon and it's snapping to it so it looks like it's okay so you may be happy with that shape but I want to show you another way to draw this kite okay the method that I find more accurate for me and easier for me to do is to use a cookie cutter to slice off these two corners here so I'm gonna select the hexagon press Control D to make a, an extra copy of it I want to come over to the rectangle tool and make a little cookie cutter shape that is one half inch wide and it needs to be longer than the hexagon so I'm gonna make two of those let's let's color it first I want to duplicate that one because I need it to two slices so I'm going to press Control D so I have an extra copy of it so I want to line this up on the right hand side of my hexagon so I'm going to select both of those and come over here and choose this alignment tool to the right and then I can choose my um, modify panel over here on the right and choose subtract so that has sliced off one side of my hexagon so I need to slice off this corner but I don't want it at an angle I don't want to mess with trying to rotate that um, you know to get it to cut off that one so I'm going to rotate the rest of my hexagon by choosing the transform panel and I want to rotate it 60 degrees I think and I want to align this one on the left hand side so I'm going to select both of those and use the alignment tool up here to the left hand side 
go back to the cookie cutter and subtract. So checking the measurements of my kite here, it shows 1.732 tall and 1.5 wide. So let's check it with the kite that we drew before and that seems to be correct. So those, those are two different ways that you can draw that kite shape that will work with your hexagon. And you can see the sides match over here and it meets up in the, in the point and it will work with other shapes that we have drawn in the program. Now for change in sizes, um, we'll go back to our calculator here and let's say I want these to be 1.5 inches sides. Um, then I've got all my measurements here that I can refer to. I've got the other one memorized. I don't have this one memorized, but I'm going to keep it handy so that I can refer to it. So I'm going to go to my hexagon first and I'm going to, this one's easy because all I have to do is lock the button and change it to, since my sides are 1.5, I need the width to be 3 because it's double. So now my hexagon is uh, now the 1.5 inch sides. So I can go through each one of the pieces and change these measurements. So I'm going to leave the lock button on throughout so that um, I can get these measurements. So I'm referring to, I'm going to change this 1.732 to the uh, short diagonal measurement that I'm looking at on my uh, Omni calculator to 2.598. And it's going to make the height the perfect size for my hexagon. So I'm just going to go through all of my shapes. I'm going to delete this one to get it out of my way. And um, same thing on this one. I'm going to use that short diagonal measurement. So now this one is correct. This one needs to be, I'm going to change that same measurement again, 2.598. And this one is good. And this one I'm going to change the 0.866 to this measurement right here. So it's the 1.299. And I could have just simply, this one was an easy one, I could have just said three, three inches because it's double what the sides are. And the little triangle, um, this one I need the width to be one 0.5, so the sides will be the same. So that one. So either one of the measurements that you can change is fine. So this is 1.299, so that coincides with my uh, reference that I'm using. So the last one is this one, and um, you can see here it shows this measurement from here. It's it's telling me all the measurements: 1.5, 1.732. So let's change. Um, let's change this one again. Let's see, I'm typing in the wrong numbers here. 2.598. This is my crazy shape that drives me, drives me crazy, but I think I did it right. So there are, now I have all the pieces that'll work with a pattern that calls for a 1.5 inch sides. So this is, you know, to me, the key to this whole thing is this calculator because it keeps my pieces to the right dimensions uh, so that they'll all work together perfectly. So um, hopefully this will uh, help you to um, draw your own shapes and use cookie cutters and that kind of thing. So quickly, I just want to show you if you want to make um, pattern pieces to... Um, uh, cut out your fabric. Let's do the triangle because I want to show you another another little thing here. So you can do it with all of these shapes but we'll play with the triangle. You just go to your offset menu and select it and then I want an outer 
offset. And I like a 3 8 inch uh, seam allowance on larger pieces. If it's smaller pieces, I'll do a quarter inch seam allowance and I want sharp corners. And you see how they, it kind of guesses where you want to whack off the corners. And that's a technical term, whack. Well, if I want the corner to be cut a little bit closer to the points here so there's not so much fabric here, I can come over here and um, in decrease that to say 0.375 and it kind of cuts off a little bit more of that corner for you. So now when you send this to the cutter, um, this would be your fabric piece right here and this would be your paper piece. But if you want, I would create a little template. I'm going to center those back again with each other. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Right there is what I wanted to do. I'm going to group them together. And when you send this to the cutter, it's going to cut this little window out. So you'll have a little template that you can cut out on heavy cardstock or, or even I've used um, Quilter's template plastic to create my own templates and I've cut them out with my, um, I've used my Cricut. I haven't used the Silhouette, but it'll be able to do it too. So it, um, it, it has no problem cutting through that plastic. And you'll have a little windowed template that you can use to do some fussy cutting. So um, the, it's a great tool to create custom shapes for English paper piecing. So I hope you enjoyed all of this and I uh, hope it helps you to uh, make your own pattern pieces.